Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Uh, we have seen that uh, this uh, cancer network is really uh, has very broad field, has many, many different uh, uh, branch of science. Uh, so, uh, so today my story will uh, show this uh, cancer network connection with uh, condensed matter physics, uh, quantum information, and some pure uh, mathematical uh, physics. Okay, so uh, so why is network useful in condensed matter physics? Because we can use tensor network to represent the path integral. Uh, for example, we can consider uh, a space time uh, with a triangulation. So 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 there's a uh, there's a degree of freedom uh, leaving some uh, some edges, for example. And then this uh, then we have this uh, tensor uh, 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 connecting those degree of freedom. We can behave like a, a Lagrangian, and then this uh, the path integral uh, can be written as a, a tensor trace. Uh, it's a product of a tensor with sum over all those index. Summing over those index actually is like performing path integral uh, in physics. So, uh, so from mathematical point of view, you can see that uh, the all the physical uh, system or quantum many body system are really defined by this kind of a tensor network trace. Okay. And using tensor network setup, we can have this uh, renormalization. We can understand renormalization uh, uh, in a very simple way. Uh, we just uh, combine, for example, this four tensor into the single tensor, uh, treat these uh, two legs as a pair of index. Then that's, uh, in this case, uh, we, we, we kind of combine four tensor into a single tensor. This is like a renormalization, um, simplify the net network. But certainly, uh, we also, to, to really uh, do this renormalization, we also need to uh, transform those uh, index. So we have pair of index A, B, then we transform this uh, into, into some other basis, such that uh, this new tensor uh, have the property that uh, the, the most weight are uh, concentrated near the low index range. So this really uh, gave us a renormalization from the, the original tensor uh, to a new tensor. Then we can repeat these steps, and then at the end we get a fixed point tensor. So actually, uh, in this talk, uh, 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 I will mostly concentrate on the fixed point tensor because those fixed point tensor uh, have uh, some very nice uh, properties. Okay, and to really discuss this uh, tensor network renormalization in a more general setting, uh, I will try to use a dual picture. So instead of using this star to represent the tensor. Uh, we use a square to represent tensor, uh, where the uh, here, here if you run for tensor, the index live on the uh, four edge of the square. And the shared edge have the same index, and this index is summed over. And the tensor micro renormalization simply just uh, erasing the internal uh, edges, then from four square to being one square. So that is a, a tensor micro network renormalization. Okay. So in this setup, uh, I can present a more general uh, tensor network. Basically, imagine we can have a space-time triangulation. The magnetically is called a, a simplicial or complex. And uh, so here, I just uh, for easy to draw, right? I just draw the three plus one dimensional or, or the two plus one dimensional or three dimensional uh, triangulation. Okay. So the the in the in the simplicial complex, uh, the basic cell are tetrahedrons. So for each tetrahedron, we associate with a tensor we call the C, okay? And here we generalize that. We say uh, we, we, we have index of physical degree freedom live on the vertex, which we call the V, or live on the edge, we call the E, or live on the face, or we call the phi, okay? And, uh, and et cetera. So therefore, this tensor for the single tetrahedron actually is a rank 14 uh, complex tensor. So this is the one generalization of, uh, of the uh, ordinary tensor network. And, uh, and then uh, we also have, a, but for the, for, the, for the ease of discussing uh, a fixed point tensor, it turns out that uh, uh, we need to introduce uh, two additional tensor. We call the weight tensor. So in this uh, three dimensional network, we have a tensor on the vertex, which you call the, which actually vector only depend on one index, so the W, and a tensor on the, on the edge, which is rank three tensor. And those weight tensor basically define some kind of norm. So they are all positive definite. 
And if you download post, post definite, the Tesla network may be de de define a non-unitary system. So that's maybe even more interesting, but uh, uh, we don't study here. Okay. So this really motivated by the Turo-Rio state sum, which are well known in mathematical uh, literature. And then the, uh, the, and then the, the tensor network contraction will be the ordinary contraction of this run 14 tensor, but with some weeping, weeping tensor, you know, and uh, so all the internal face, internal edge, the index are identified and summed over. So that, that is, uh, uh, that defines the partition function in physics. So this is really a very general way uh, to describe a, a physical system using a tensor network. And why I set up tensor network in such a complicated, maybe sophisticated way, it's really because uh, using this setup, we can consider a special kind of tensor which have a retranslation environments. And this retranslation environments actually uh, is, a pro is a sufficient condition to give us a fixed point tensor. May not be necessary, but a sufficient condition. And because uh, the, the fixed point tensor have a scale environments, you know, we can smaller tensor can bigger tensor, they are the same. And the rich translation environments is, uh, include the scale environments, but in also including uh, more general environments. Okay. So the condition for the rich translation environments, uh, the, the first condition is uh, we obtained by examining this, this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, two cell. This, uh, this cell can be viewed the two tetrahedral attached to together. So the evaluation of a tensor network or tensor uh, contraction on this cell is uh, like a, you have two tensor, and you sum over index in this face, you know, there's a triangle that is shared the triangle, internal triangle, there's index, this index is summed over. And the same geometric shape can be viewed as a, as a three tetrahedra by adding a line from zero to four. Then if you really look carefully, this can be, it can be viewed as a three tetrahedra. And then the evaluation of a three tetrahedra on this shape is really three tensor, then there's a many internal triangles that summed over, and there's a also a internal edge that's a zero four summed over with this weak tensor. So and the, the condition the, is a retranslation environment condition. Yeah. Sorry, the, there's there's a question by uh, Lansberg. Yes. Yeah, could could you explain again the definition of a fixed point tensor? I, I fixed, don't... This is a definition. So, so therefore, you can see this shape can be viewed as a two tetrahedral or can be viewed as three tetrahedral. And the Tesla network contraction on these two, on this two shape is identical. That is a retranslation environment. Means that uh, we, can, we, can, we can divide uh, the same shape with in different uh, way by different tetrahedrals, but the Tesla network evaluation is identical. So yeah, this is condition uh, for the retranslation environments. And and then there was a question about by yeah. John Feng Lu. Yeah, please. Yeah, also uh, I have a question on. So you have orientations on edge. So what are the roles of these? Yeah, I. I that's something I try to hide. The reason is that these tensor, you know, there's like index of zero, one, two, three. They are ordered. So we you should know which one is the first, which one is second. So this arrow is called the branching structure. So on each triangle, we don't have a three arrow go around the loop. They are kind of frustrated, always frustrated. And this branching structure gave a, a tetrahedral order, like a, a, in this, a, this a vertex zero have a no incoming edge. Vertex one have one incoming edge. Vertex two have a two incoming edge, and et cetera. They are ordered. So then that's a, so then, then the vertex index would assign to the, in this order, like a, the zero, one, two, three. Uh, so, 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 so this uh, the ordering is important. So this ordering is uh, translated from geometry by this uh, branching structure. I see. Thanks. And also, there's a this 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 tetrahedral have orientation. You know, have a plus minus orientation, which is uh, uh, taken care of by this uh, complex conjugate. But those are shadow details. I kind of try to hide here. Okay. So this is the wonderful. Uh, 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 equivalence that a uh, two tetrahedra can be viewed as three tetrahedra because they, they can touch to form the same thing. And uh, here we can say that uh, the single tetrahedra can be viewed as a four tetrahedra attached together. We have we are the vertex in the middle, 
then we can view as a four tetrahedral and a 100 tetrahedral same thing. So therefore we have another relation that a single tetrahedral, that's a single tensor, which is equal to a combination of four tensors with certain traits. So that's the second uh, 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 condition for the, uh, for the real triangulation environments. And these two conditions look uh, is enough because uh, any two triangulation can be uh, can be deformed to each other via these two two steps. Uh, well, the first one is a two three move. Here is a is a one four move. They may be called a partner move or something something like that. There's a there's a, a term in mathematical literature. Yeah. So therefore, the fixed point tensor, uh, which describe a quantum phase in condensed matter actually is given by the solution of these two horrible uh, uh, nonlinear algebraic equation. So if you can solve this uh, nonlinear algebraic equation, you obtain a, a fixed point tensor, you obtain a, a, a quantum phase of matter. And actually the, all the solution uh, classify all different possible phase of matter, fixed point uh, phase of matter. So therefore the classification of a quantum phase of matter in kinematic physics can be translated into solution of this uh, a horrible algebraic equation. And those kind of algebraic equations have been studied in, in man, by mathematicians. So in three, in two plus one dimension or three dimension, those fixed point tensor or the solution uh, are really correspond to this uh, so-called fusion category theory. And in higher dimension, the solution, you have a more, more complicated solution and they call the fusion N minus one uh, category. So, so this is really the using category theory uh, to classify uh, the many about the entanglement. And uh, so basically, uh, this is a kind of a new uh, direction in kinetic matter physics that uh, we know that symmetry are described by group theory and the many about the entanglement, their pattern are described by category theory. So this is uh, how the category theory enter. And uh, uh, so more precisely, those, uh, those fusion categories really classify the uh, topology order with a gap the boundary. Yeah, there's a, a modifier here. And uh, the, the one with the gapless boundary uh, is beyond this, this kind of fixed point tensor. So that's a more interesting, uh, uh, and maybe it's more complicated also. So, uh, so some well-known theory uh, actually are, are, can be described by this setting. For example, the ordinary gate theory. In ordinary gate theory, we only have a, a, a variable on the edge. We don't have a vertex variable. We don't have face variable. We just have an edge variable. And this edge variable are really uh, belong to a group. And the tensor C is very simple, just either zero or one, you know, and depend on some condition I will write down here. And that's give us a lattice gate theory. Uh, uh, that's why we can generalize the lattice gate theory by allowing this uh, C to be zero or some phase factor. So instead of one, you can some phase factor. This time to be a uh, group cycles. And uh, so that's give a twist gate theory or called so-called diva witten gate theory. And uh, then the, in the uh, in uh, in kind of matter, we also study string net model, uh, which essentially say that uh, we have a, a variable on the edge and the face, but nothing on the vertex. And uh, then we have non-trivial uh, uh, this D tensor on the edge and the non-trivial the C tensor on the for each tetrahedral. And so solving this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, equation, which called the Pendigan equation in that case. And then we get uh, this, uh, 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 we got uh, this fusion category, which classified uh, uh, this uh, string net model. Okay. And uh, there's so-called uh, this uh, symmetry product topological phase, uh, which is uh, also can be described in this setting, uh, which is uh, here we all have a, a, a variable on the vertex, nothing on the edge, nothing on the face. And the, the, the vertex variable really belong to the group. And this tensor is just a, a, a complex number. And then the solution of that uh, just gave us this uh, 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 SPT uh, order. So, uh, so I will really uh, uh, mainly talk about this SPT order. So when you have only the vertex variable and when this uh, tensor is only the phase factor, then this uh, horrible equation uh, became simplified. Uh, those equations are horrible because we have a sum. Okay, the sum really because we have internal index. But if a vertex, if, all, if our variable or index only live on the vertex, then you can see that uh, the, uh, there's no internal, uh, sorry, sorry, I should say maybe this one is better. So there's no internal, uh, there's no internal index. Okay, so every, every uh, index is uh, ex external. 
So therefore, this equation, this uh, this uh, this nonlinear equation, will become uh, a equation without summation. It became this equation: three times on one side, two times on another side, but no summation. We have no summation. This nonlinear algebraic equation is simplified because we can take a log. After taking log, it became linear equation, and it can be solved by linear algebra. Okay. And uh, so, so this is tremendously uh, simplified the, uh, uh, the, the, the calculation. And it turns out that the solution of this equation is uh, really a uh, co-cycle in mathematics literature. It's called a group co-cycle. It turns out, also turns out that if, uh, if we find one solution, then we can modify uh, this solution by some ratio of some function live on the, on the triangles. You know, those, uh, those types of live on the hydrohedra. Hydrohedra have four triangles on the face, and then each triangle you can assign some rank three tensor. Then this multiplication will cancel each other in this equation. So this is a C tilt also solution, and this B is called the co-boundary. So so therefore this uh, this uh, cohomology the equivalent class of those solution uh, really classify this SPD order in tensor matter uh, physics. So this uh, therefore using tensor network we can understand SPD order in a very uh, simple uh, fashion. Okay, but in this talk, uh, I will mainly concentrate on the special situation where this group is a continuous group. If the, if the symmetry or the index on the vertex is uh, labeled by the element in a continuous group, then the corresponding category theory will be an uh, infinite category, means uh, the number of objects will be infinite, not a finite category. So that's something not studied very well I think, and uh, and so uh, so, but but however, uh, for the causal condition, we can we can really solve this uh, linear equation uh, uh, in the infinite dimensional space. It's okay. We can we can do that. But here there's something uh, very subtle. Is that we should not because those group are uh, is uh, have infinite number of elements. It can have some topology. You know, have some continuity in it. So one one maybe naturally think maybe we should be looking for the condition. Uh, this this uh, function, this tensor, uh, which are continuous function of a group elements, that turn to be a uh, wrong choice. If you do that, and we're missing uh, uh, some important solution and an important uh, SPT order, it turns out to, to really obtain the old SPT order, we we need to assume this uh, this uh, function to be a measurable function. <laughs> some really strange, but uh, thinking about that is also reasonable because. Uh, uh, those tensors are fixed point tensors. Maybe your original tensor is continuous, but the limit of continuous function may not be continuous. Actually, limit of continuous function may be the measurable function because they really talk about the limits of continuous function. And also, as long as you can do pass integral, it'll be fine. So something you can do integral, we can define measure, and then that's okay. So this is a measurable function. And that would give us the full classification of the SPT order in tensor matter uh, physics. Uh, but the measurable function is too wild. And uh, so some mathematicians show that uh, we can get a much better, we can, using, we can use a continuous function, but kind of piecewise, a uh, piecewise continuous uh, function. Yeah. And uh, that would, uh, would, uh, would uh, do the same, same job. It turns out that uh, if it's a measurable function with a measurable function as a co-boundary, a piecewise uh, function, continuous function, and a piecewise continuous function as a co-boundary, they, they too give right to the same uh, cohomology class. Okay, and so this is a, uh, this is a, uh, so this is a, our setup uh, to to find using these cycles or these group cycles uh, to design the tensor, and then to design the path integral uh, to design the quantum system which realize certain uh, topological uh, phase. Okay, uh, so now the question that uh, so let's assume our symmetry group is a U one. Okay, the the index is U one group. And how to write down these uh, three cycles uh, uh, for the uh, for the for the U one group? How to write down them concretely? How to write down as a formula? Okay. So so here we I will use uh, something called the co-chain cycles formalism in algebraic topology. Let me just very very quickly introduce this co-chain cycle theory. The so-called zero co-chain basically. Is uh, assign each uh, vertex with some value. So for our case, we assign each vertex 
with a value in the group. Uh, so this is called the zero co chain. Okay. And the one co chain means that we assign each edge with a value. For example, with a U1 group element. And so we call that kind of one co chain, which live on the edge. Physically, that's a field live on the vertex or field live on the edge. Okay. And you can also define derivative. That is a, from zero co chain, we can construct one co chain. We mean from, from field on the vertex, we can construct the field live on the edge. Basically by taking the difference, you know, we have an edge uh, uh, connecting by vertex, connecting uh, vertex R and J. Then we can just difference G, I, G, J, define something on the edge. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's called a derivative written in this way. Okay. We can also have a couple product. Okay, and uh, for example, we can have a M co chain live on the uh, M cell and N co chain live on the N cell. So we can define a uh, uh, M plus N co chain live on the M plus N dimensional cell. Okay, by by simply putting these two uh, components together with only one index overlap. Okay, and uh, just this and this uh, you can get this the cut product. And uh, we can also do the integration simply, suppose uh, we have a three dimensional manifold, we have a three co chain. And the three manifold after triangulation is a combination of uh, a tetrahedrons. On each tetrahedron, we have this uh, co chain, have the value, we just sum all the value with a plus minus sign because of this orientation uh, uh, consideration. And so this we call the integration. So this is basically this uh, co chain co cycle uh, formalism. We can use this co chain co cycle. To write down, uh, to write down this uh, uh, this tensor. Okay. So it turns out that uh, for for three dimension, if a G is U one, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this H. Uh, let, me, let me write this. H three U one and U one is non-trivial. It's a Z. Yeah. So there's a non-trivial uh, co-cycle. And so the question is that how to write down this uh, uh, non-trivial uh, co-cycle in terms of uh, this uh, uh, variable G1, G2, G3, okay. And then using this uh, uh, cohomology, co-chain co uh, co co-cycle formalism uh, in algebraic topology, we can do that. Uh, basically, we first take exponentiation. That's uh, our uh, tensor on each tetrahedron is uh, this capital C, which has taken exponentiation uh, we got this little c, okay, and uh, this little c actually is written as a, in this in this way. That's expression for the little c. It's a dg dg taking integer part then d again. <laughs> okay, so this is really three co cycle because dg the g is a zero co chain, so dg is a one co chain. Uh, this dg is one co chain. Take another D, get a two co chain. Together, you get a three co chain. So that is the three three co chain. Okay. And uh, and this uh, this uh, strange formula is a uh, is uh, taking the integer part because uh, G have a value. Uh, here I, again, I take integer lift. The G is supposed to be describe a point on the circle, but I using the segment from the minus two to plus two to parameterize the U one group elements. And uh, then this. Uh, and this symbol really means I take a nearest the integer. So that's where we get the piecewise continuous function. This discontinuity coming from this part. Okay. And using this uh, strange symbol, we are able to write down this uh, uh, U1 group co-cycle in a very compact form. And we can also write this into component. In the component that's in, on the tetrahedral one, zero, one, two, three, uh, is depend on the uh, G on the vertex in this uh, formula. And so you can see that this is a, this is a, a DG. So this part is this a DG part. And then we take an integer part, that's it, it's string simple. Then this combination is a D of a DG. Yeah, just a, this is, that's a, that again, the a, a co-chain uh, calculation. And this part is a, the first a DG, okay. So that's a how, uh, how, 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 we, how, we do, how we do it, okay. And then in this case, uh, we find that uh, uh, this kind of tensor network have a, have a, some very nice property. That is, uh, it so first have this uh, Z gauge invariance. So we can change uh, this G by integer number. And then this, uh, 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 
this tensor is invariant, do not change by that. And this is required because uh, we, we do an integer lift, we do the, uh, we, we lift the U1 to, from U1 to, to, to real number. So this really, this, uh, this, this number really describes U1 circle. So we need this to, so to say that, yeah, the G do indeed describe it is a U1 variable. We need this. And also this, uh, this, uh, this tensor have a, have a U1 symmetry means if you shift all the G by a constant, by an H, and because uh, they are in terms of DG only, so only the difference. So the constant shifts don't show up. So therefore it's natural to have a U1 symmetry. So this way really uh, is rebuilt using the algebraic topology, we build a, a tensor and we build a tensor network where we do the contraction and that describe a quantum system. And this quantum system is supposed to describe this U1 SPD state, some topological phase, a symmetry protect topology phase with U1 symmetry. So this is really the, the game uh, we play here. And, uh, but how do you know uh, this model is a, is a, is a non-trivial uh, topological phase? And uh, so actually it's, it's a little bit uh, tricky. It turns out that uh, 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 this kind of a pass integral, so uh, this kind of a, a evaluation, we can evaluate this pass integral. It turns out that if our space time have a no boundary, it's closed manifold. Then this, uh, this quantity evaluation is very trivial. It's always equal to one because uh, this is uh, 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 on the closed manifold. Uh, this evaluation always integer. So, so the partition function always equal to one looks like a trivial. So indeed uh, that's uh, 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 it's, uh, it's kind of like trivial fix. Uh, but however, uh, uh, but however uh, on, the, on, the, on the theory with the boundary, you know, if, uh, uh, if if this uh, m this uh, space time manifold have a boundary, then 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 the boundary uh, the boundary part is non-trivial. Uh, this boundary part is non-trivial, and this non-trivial boundary uh, uh, indicate uh, we have a uh, uh, this uh, this uh, bulk uh, topological phase uh, have non-trivial boundary, and uh, so it's like SPD phase. As a character of SPD phase, that's uh, the, all the bulk is trivial. But the boundary is non-trivial, and actually, it's a more direct way uh, to see this is a falling, uh, because uh, because uh, when the space time have a uh, when the space time have a boundary, uh, like like a, uh, uh, let's draw that in 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 one plus one dimension. So we have one plus one dimension time, space time have a boundary, uh, we can think a time direction is a radial direction. So therefore, this boundary can be viewed as a time slice. And then and this pass integral uh, with the boundary can be viewed as a ground state wave function uh, live on this time slice. So, so therefore, this pass integral basically gave us the ground state wave function using the tensor network calculation. And then because we have U1 symmetry, uh, using this ground state wave function, we can do a, a central twist. That is, when you have a space is a torus, uh, we can assume this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, our U1 variable uh, will go around torus at a twist by the same theta x in x direction, theta y in y direction. So this, uh, this is called the uh, ground state wave function with a symmetry twist. And uh, so in this way, using this uh, tensor network, we can obtain the ground state wave function with a symmetry twist, means the parameter that is theta x, theta y. And this ground state wave function can be viewed as a, a ground state parameterized by these two parameter of my method called a line bundle uh, uh, on the torus. And the complex line bundle on the torus uh, have a chain numbers. And actually using this uh, ground state wave function, this explicit wave function, we compute that the chain number is non-trivial. A chain number it is a K, and that is a K up here in our definition of a tensor network. So this K just another integer K is an integer parameter here. Okay. And this, this non trivial chain number really means a, a, a non zero Hall conductance. So, this is a, a so, so here we find that uh, we can have an exact soluble uh, uh, a tensor network or exact soluble passenger group, which is realized the condenser matter system with a non zero uh, Hall conductance. Okay. And for the people in the tensor network, this result may be a little bit uh, uh, surprising. Let me skip that. 
and because uh, people are trying to use a Python network to write down uh, uh, the a system which describe quantum house states and with some difficulties. And, uh, and the difficulty is really that it seems that we cannot find a fixed point tensor to describe quantum house state, but uh, we can find a non-fixed point tensor to describe that, but not fixed point tensor. And here, what we find is that we have a fixed point tensor describing a SPD state with a non-zero uh, Hall conductance. And this is surprising because uh, 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 actually uh, two years ago, I mean three years ago, uh, there's a paper to say that uh, uh, there is no, uh, the non-zero Hall conductance uh, cannot be realized by local commuting projector Hamiltonian. So any com local commuting projector Hamiltonian must have a zero Hall conductance. This Hall conductance is a very interesting topological property. Uh, it's beyond this uh, local commuting uh, projector Hamiltonian. It turns out that this uh, is not soluble. Uh, sorry. Uh, this uh, real triangulation environment uh, tensor network actually gave us a commuting projector uh, Hamiltonian. And uh, so I will not explain that. We, we indeed will have that. And uh, so actually, we have a counter example that a commuting projector. Hamiltonian indeed can produce a non-zero Hall conductance. But actually these two statements have no contradiction. The reason is that I think in this, uh, uh, in the first paper, we assume there's a Hilbert space per site is a finite dimensional. In our case, uh, each site we have a rotor angular variable. So the Hilbert space per site is infinite dimensional. So this became a key point. So we find out if a Hilbert space per site is infinite dimensional or the tensor is infinite dimensional, then we can have a, a fixed point tensor uh, realizing the non-zero Hall conductance. If a tensor is a finite dimensional, that's the most tensor network have a finite dimensional, index have a finite range, then those tensor, uh, the, the fixed point tensor of this kind cannot describe the non-zero Hall conductance. But if you relax that condition to infinite dimensional tensor, then we can do it. So this is a really uh, some story uh, uh, connecting the tensor network, uh, condensed matter physics, quantum information, people do commuting project Hamiltonian, and the pure mathematics, cohomology, and the category theory. Yeah, thank you very much.